Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well and today we've got some pretty big news or at least it could potentially be big news because according to our good old friend John Campia, Mr. King Shill himself, he says that Ryan Johnson's trilogy appears to be dead. Now this is from the John Campia show where he claims to have an inside source who says that they are no longer planning to make the Ryan Johnson Star Wars trilogy. Now all I can say is well that just makes sense to me because to me it would be stupid stupid for them to try and actually go forward with a theatrical release of the films because I honestly think there's enough people who are pissed off about what he did with The Last Jedi that are going to say, yeah, you know what, go ahead, give him a trilogy because I won't go to see it. I was saying this the other day that I think that if you took about the entire audience that actually went to go see in theaters The Last Jedi, I would say probably 25% of that audience would be like, yeah, you know what, screw this dude, I am no longer going to support him. Again, that might be a high number, I honestly don't know, obviously I don't have any data in front of me and I admit this completely. But I'm also not a person that's going to claim to have inside information and then end up being wrong, which John Campia has been wrong before. Now, some people are trying to say, well, the source that told him this is the same source that told him about Ben Affleck leaving Batman and being fired from Batman, and that turned out to be true. The problem, though, is that to say that Ben Affleck got fired and that to be an inside source and to say it before anything actually happened, to me, kind of just makes damn sense because I thought that he was pretty much on the way out for a very long time. Just because he was the first person to say, oh, yeah, he's out. To me, it just sounds like, okay, you said he was out and you got lucky because it turned out to be true because you were able to kind of read the tea leaves and even if you did have an inside source, then that inside source was likely going to tell you something that was pretty much a foregone conclusion at this point. Now, with the Ryan Johnson stuff, this seems to be a little bit more mysterious because even though to me it makes total sense from not to get a trilogy, it does seem to be kind of a, you know, hit or miss because remember there was a, the, the, the rumor that, you know, dropped about a couple months ago where he you know, was said to have been out of the trilogy, that the Star Wars trilogy was no longer happening, and then he'd gone on Twitter and said, oh no, all of this is fake, all of this isn't true, and then of course continued in his trolling ways, and he's continued. You know, up until last week, he's continued to be a giant troll, especially with Game of Thrones and so many other things, him throwing it in the face saying, oh man, oh, your expectations were subverted? <laughs> oh my gosh, your, your expectations were subverted, this is my joy. This is what gives me so much joy in the world, because my last Jedi, it subverted all your expectations too. I'm very sad that Marian Johnson's voice also, ha also happens to be very close to the voice that I have for my couch pup Willow, who's behind me. I don't know if you can see her right now. But all I can say is that <laughs> it just, oh, it's so cringeworthy. It really is. It's so cringeworthy at this point because he, he continues to troll. He continues to show why he shouldn't be given a Star Wars trilogy at this point. And I don't know. The Last Jedi was not enough. I really don't know why that could not be enough at this point. I mean, what happened in the shadow in the wake of The Last Jedi? Oh, yeah, that's right. Five to six months later, we had Solo, which was the first Star Wars film to ever in the history of Star Wars, lose money. Even the Star Wars Holiday Special, which was a TV release, made money. You wanna know why? Because there were advertisers who said, oh, it's a Star Wars property, ooh, let me buy, let me buy, let me buy. Now, even though they may have regretted that choice, because the Star Wars Holiday Special is still very cringeworthy, though I think hilariously so, I'm sorry, but Life Day is always going to be the best day. Life Day is only better than one other day, and that is Pi Day. And Pi Day, to me, is awful, because I love pie. And pie is dangerous for me. And it's dangerous for my lungs, and it's dangerous for, you know, my heart, and all these other things. But <laughs> anyway, still, when you talk about that film, and when you talk about that TV film, and you realize that even that film made money, even that holiday special garbage made money, but Solo didn't. Solo lost money. Solo, Solo lost $200 million or so at the box office. That's insane. That's an insane amount of money. And then there's some people trying to say, oh, your numbers aren't right. I'm sorry. I just based it off the numbers that they gave me and based on industry standards. And that's how I got to it. I've covered all of that stuff in a countless number of videos that you can find on the channel under the Star Wars playlist. But what I do know is this, is that that came out in the wake of Star Wars Last Jedi. And if you're going to tell me that they're not connected to each other, if you're going to tell me that it was just marketing, that it was just, oh, no one wanted to see a Solo film, I mean, again, multiple things can be true at once, but for a Star Wars film to lose 200 million, that's not just because of the reshoots. Not just, that's not just because Kathleen Kennedy is a complete incompetently run person. You know, the fact that she fired a team, fired her directors 80% of the way through filming, because it was only then, it was only when most of the filming was done, then she realized, oh, you know what? This isn't the direction that we want. Fired them, boosted the production budget by another 100, 150 million dollars, and then it ended up costing a crap ton of money. But even if you take that away, even if Lord Miller continued to make the film, guess what? The film still would have lost $100 million when you adjust for all of those numbers. So the film was still a flop, even if they had somehow, some way finished the film the first time. So it doesn't matter that they didn't get to finish the project. Now, some could say, you know, well, the Lord Miller version may have been able to bring in more eyeballs because they were very well known for the Lego movie and all these other things that they've done. But still, there's no guarantee that that would have happened anyway. 
I honestly think that when you really, you know, when you really think it's time, you know, when you take a moment to step back and say, you know what, why did Solo lose money? Why has Star Wars really gone down the dumps recently? The Last Jedi is pretty much, you know, patient zero. Some might be able to say that, you know, The Force Awakens was patient zero, but I think that most people, I would say most people who saw that film said, yeah, you know what, it was okay, uh, after thinking about it. Because I think opening night, most people were like, oh man, this is great, Star Wars is back. And then when they started to think about it, you know, over time, they said, okay, you know what, I didn't like this decision. Wait, we never got the big three. We never got the main three. We never got, you know, Han, Leia, and Luke on the big screen together ever again. We're never going to have that moment ever again for a wide variety of reasons. And that all, you know, all of that is indeed true. The biggest problem, though, is that I think that those are the types of things that we care about more so now than we did then. I think that if Episode Eight had ended up being a really well done film and had taken the Star Wars, you know, had taken the world of Star Wars in a better direction and hadn't just gone out of the way to subvert expectations, I think that we would still be talking mostly positively about it. I kind of, you know, want to compare it to Game of Thrones. You know, the other people that have been on Game of Thrones for the past three seasons or so, ever since George R. R. Martin left the set, you know, left the uh, the screenwriting, left at least being an overseer of the screenwriting process. I think that many people have been on it for a while, but I don't think anyone could say that a lot of people, that most people were on that list. Now people are. You know, now we're about three or four episodes into this next season, and so a lot more people now, more than ever before, are saying, oh man, this isn't good. Oh man, yeah, all they're trying to do is subvert expectations. And I can tell you, I've listened to a lot of different videos from a lot of different perspectives, and all of them have different views. All of them have different views of Star Wars, have different views of Kathleen Kennedy, of Ryan Johnson, of Endgame, of, you know, different than mine. But almost all of us can come to an agreement that this season of Game of Thrones has been a huge letdown, and it's because of them trying to subvert expectations. And because of that, guess what the first movie that is almost always mentioned by all these people is? The Last Jedi. Because The Last Jedi, to me, set the standard of subverting expectations in the wrong way. There are movies that have done it. There are shows that have done it. I mean, The Red Wedding, you could say, in the books. Hey, I know. I'm upset about it, too. I'm still upset about The Red Wedding, I know. But I don't think anyone can say that The Red Wedding, even though it subverted a lot of expectations, because a lot of people didn't see it. I, myself, didn't read the books. So I didn't see it coming in that way, not with all those different characters dying, or Ned Stark dying in the season one. I mean, a lot of people would not have said that they could see that coming. And yet, because they were able to build such a great story, because George R. R. Martin was able to build such a beautiful world, and because, you know, D&D &D were able to you know, portray it on the screen in a very good way, I think most people will say that the first few seasons, that they were able to adapt the material very well. And when you looked at that, you think to yourself, yes, that's when everything was great. That's when everyone was trying to do it. And again, you were able to subvert expectations. They were able to. George R. R. Martin in his story and what they were, you know, what D&D &D were able to do on the screen for HBO were able to subvert expectations while at the same time having something to fall back on. The, the reason why Last Jedi, the reason why, you know, Ryan Johnson should be fired, why he should not get a trilogy is because what he did was he subverted all the fans' expectations all at the sacrifice of the trilogy, all at the sacrifice of Star Wars itself. He created so many narrative problems because he admits it himself. He's not a writer, and yet he was given the reins to be able to write this film. We know that he's broken Star Wars because hyperspace ramming, now that's a thing. And now we go back. Anytime that you go back from this point forward, having seen The Last Jedi, you say to yourself, why in the hell do they spend so many lives and waste so much time on the Death Star when they could have just hyperspace rammed it? And if anyone tries to say, oh, shield, shield, so you're trying to tell me that the ships that were hyperspace rammed didn't have shields? Do they ever really clarify that point? Again, there's things like that. There are smaller things like the magnetic bombs. Okay, that's a pretty big thing to me, but for other people it might not be. But the hyperspace ram is a pretty big moment. You know, it's a giant moment, not only in the character arc of, you know, Admiral Hol you know, Admiral Holdo or Admiral General Stace, if I'd like to call her, but also, too, of the film itself. And, and visually, it's beautiful. Again, kudos to the visual effects team because the moment visually is striking, is beautiful. And I can give credit where credit's due. But immediately when it happens, you're like, wait a minute, I thought this wasn't possible, and that's why they had to go through all the stuff in the previous films. That all being said, the reason why I'm kind of hesitant to really get excited about this news is even though I've just been able to explain why The Last Jedi has broken not only itself, but also the Star Wars universe itself. The reason why I'm hesitant to accept it is because it's coming just from John Campia. Notice how I'm on, you know, John Campia, and he's the only thing that pops up about, you know, Ryan Johnson having his films be canceled. But when you look up Ryan Johnson, look, no other, no mainstream publications are writing about this. None of the rumor sites are even picking this up saying, according to John Campia. We haven't even gotten those yet, and I'm sure it won't be long before that eventually happens, but the fact that we're getting this and we're only getting it from one source, and that source happens to be John Campy, and John Campy has been wrong on many rumors before. I remember when this dude was saying, oh yeah, Aquaman, it's not going to make a billion dollars. It's stupid that they, released it, <laughs> that they released it in December. And sure enough, what happened? It made a billion dollars, and he's been wrong before. I've been watching John Campy for a long time. I remember when he was on the AMC show, and I remember watching that one day, and I was in the chat, and I was thinking to myself, why in the hell is this guy on? I mean, seriously, it basically were a bunch of people going back and forth, agreeing with each other about everything. And I was like, this, this isn't film criticism. 
this isn't good discussion. People should be able to disagree. People should be able to, you know, have different opposing views. But everything he did was pro studio, pro studio, defend, defend, defend. And it's interesting that now, because if you look at his Twitter, you realize that he's actually being a lot more critical of Star Wars now. The same dude that defended Force Awakens, defended Last Jedi. It's amazing that this guy is now finally the one who's like, oh yeah, Ryan John's trilogy is going to be canceled. It makes a lot of sense. So yeah, I'm going to wait until I get a lot more reliable source than this dude. That would be like me taking any advice from Ryan Johnson on how to write. Because if there's one thing the man can do, and I think that most people, at least with a brain, can admit, writing is not his forte. But guys, what do y'all thought about this? I know it's exciting news. I'm excited about it if it's true. But obviously, I want to wait for more reliable sources to come out. And for all I know, there could be a reliable source that, you know, breaks this news over the next couple of hours, you know, before this video or while this video is in the process of uploading, etc. But I think that these all the thoughts that I've said still remain true. You know, even if the rumors do turn out to be true, these thoughts will still remain valid. It just will be like, oh, well, it turned out to be true. And you know what? It should have remained true. But all I can say is be careful when, when trusting these people. And be careful when trusting the shills because sometimes the shills get wrong information and therefore, because it's coming from them, again, sometimes the sources feed false information to these people because we're more likely to accept it saying, oh, but it's John Campion. Why would he ever say this? You know, it must be true then. It must have more validity to it. But we, we need to hold on because this very well could just be Lucasfilm or even Ryan Johnson or friends of his trying to, you know, continue to keep the conversation going because guess what? This news right here is going to create hundreds of videos, hundreds of hours of content, of live streams, of videos, etc. And all of this keeps Ryan Johnson, ooh, sorry, keeps Ryan Johnson and Star Wars in the forefront, in the focus. And for episode nine to be successful, it's got to do that. Because right now the trailer hasn't done that. You know, other than Star Wars Celebration, most people would be like looking at that trailer and saying, yeah, okay, but I mean, it really was a jump the shark, jump the TIE fighter moment. I mean, seriously, what in the hell doesn't even make any sense? And a lot of people, unless you're a hardcore Star Wars fan, are not really interested at all in the future, whether it's a good, positive vibe or not. If for the general audience, I don't think anyone's going to look at that trailer and be like, oh yeah, I want to see this. That's just a general feeling. The guys, I would love to hear your thoughts about all of this news in the comments below. If you like this video, smash the like button. Give me a subscribe. It really helps you out a lot. Again, guys, uh, YouTube's been crazy lately. As I mentioned in the last video, uh, you know, the algorithms have been kind of messed up. And it's just, again, I'm, I'm sick and tired of it. That's why I'm trying to look to other sites like DLive. I'm looking into other sites. Um, I was trying to bit shoot for a bit. But even that one, it seems like all the alternatives really aren't that well established yet. And it's <laughs> it makes it a lot harder to be able to do these types of things. So if you could please subscribe, like, share the video, do whatever you can, even if you can't financially support the channel through the super chats or through anything like that for the live streams or through using the Amazon affiliate links or anything like that, if at the very least you could do is like and share. That's all I need. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Have a wonderful day, and as always, God bless.